Uh, here we go again. I'm still working um, at home um, for Bolo project. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, it, uh, the, the, what I have here today. I have written it down. I'm trying to, you know, speak it good English. Um, what I'm going to work on today is called rhythm um, structuring. If I am right with the pronunciation, rhythm structuring. The reason why I brought this um, today is um, many people are not clear about playing a rhythm and banging a drum or making a noise. And in Africa, we 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 apply lot of things on the drum it's just like it's just like cooking when you want to cook something you must have a target you must have like um, okay i want to cook this thing today this kind of food today and you know exactly what and what you need to put together to cook it before you eat it so it's the same as you know dealing with these little boys here the drums First, I want to introduce, um, give you the names of the drums. This one I have here is called Kungu. And Kungu um, is a wall of drum. And if we look through, we'll see that it's a hollow drum. The covers, we have people in Africa called the covers. And they normally um, cut like a branch from a tree and they use special tools to carve the drum. And this hole here, you see, contributes a lot to the sound because um, in Africa when we play our drums, the, the basic note, we, we, we consider it as the heart beat, like a human being, you have your heart. So because when we, when we beat the, the middle of the drum like that, you can hear that booming sound. And that is because you have this hole here through. And the skin is goat skin. Goat skin. And these small pegs, if I take it again, these small woods you're seeing are tied to the head here. They help us to tune the drum. We call them pegs. It's just like um, a guitarist with the guitar. Normally, right at the, uh, the top of the head, you have those knots you twist. These ones are too strong. You can't twist them. But normally what we use, we use, normally use a hammer just to you know, take them out and stretch the ropes. Put the peg bar and hit it with either using a stone or using a hammer. And the wood is mahogany. We have people in Africa, as I said before, who go to the forest and cut part of a tree, which is a branch, and then have a choice which type of drum they want to use. And this one in the middle is called djembe which is from a Susu tribe. Actually, the, the, the name of the drum, the way the drum is carved, is from the wall of tribe called Mbombo. But what we did is we, we skin it differently, like you skin in a djembe, so that we can, you know, uh, bring the tuning in a different angle all the time. And that one also is hollow because we need the basic note from it as well. Um, the reason why I put the sticks there so that they can hold it without sinking through the hole, not like this one pegs. And if, if, you, if you look at the head, let me take it again, it's round ring, you have a round ring. This is double round ring, double. You have one ring on top and another round ring underneath. And they hold the skin. So what is not going to happen is if you if you pull the strings one after the other, 
then they will pull the the round rings together to to stretch the skin and that's the way you normally apply in order to tune the drum and for me I will not call it djembe but I will call it mbongbong despite the fact there is no pegs normally mbongbong have pegs like this one which is a wall of drum but I mean the, the way the carvers carve it is mbongbong not djembe and this one here the last one is called lamba, which is a little bit heavy, that's why I'm standing up. I have to pull it to show you what's the difference. You know, these are the pegs for tuning, and if you look at the lamba, it's completely sealed underneath. That's why we call it lamba. And with that, you don't normally have the basic note because it's covered. If you hit it, you have a very deaf sound but with that one we need it just to produce the tone right and it's mahogany as well and you can see these pegs they use also for tuning I can hit them and the more I hit them around the more the sound became higher all the time but there's a level we balance it so that um, we can play through so now um, we want to find out how to, wh what I mean by rhythm structuring. I've been around to many places and sometimes people get confused with playing a rhythm, banging a drum and hitting a drum. Because for me, and in Africa, what we really mean by a complete rhythm before we call anything you play on the drums that is a nice rhythm is something that you play and it makes you move or want to move and there's some elements different elements you need to add up to do that so now I'm just going to show you what, what I mean by that for example, if I hit this drum, the tone one, you can hear they have all different sounds. Then if I keep playing like, you will hear a sound of a drum or sounds from different drums because they all have different sound so now with the bass I'll, I'll, I'll hit always use my palms to produce the bass like yeah you can hear that they are all producing like a basic note, but the tone is different. They are giving different sound. Listen to it carefully. And that's kungu. That's mbombong. That's lamba. But if I keep playing like... What you will feel, you will hear just keep listening to someone just hitting the drum or you can call it banging the drums because with those different you know patterns or elements I'm putting on the drum actions on the drums they can't make me even if I want to sing I might find it a little bit empty so now let's see I'm I'm trying to if I play something like sound of course because it's from two uh, three different drums so now I'm using like for this one I can use what we call slap it's heavy and then tone 
or here I can do here the tone and here the bass so before we play any 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 type of rhythm we must be aware that these are the three different things we put together like tone slap and bass and any other things you can put like expression because you have feeling you have natural when you're building a rhythm you have something coming in your mind naturally to see all right i also touch this one twice or three or four or four you know all those elements put together to to formulate the the rhythm so now let me try again i'm playing But I want to make it very interesting so that it will make me move. There is something if I play it's starting to build up. I'm starting to build up because I want to get somewhere where somebody can just dance or sing. But there's something lacking. There's something missing. And we call that the groove. You see? You can hear me start moving. That's the groove now. So I'm putting the groove now. So you can feel it. You can dance.
that's what I mean by rhythm structuring. A rhythm without groove is not completed. The groove that gives you a very relaxing opportunity to, to dance. That's why the groove in any rhythmic format you do is very important to know how you blend or how you uh, move from playing the pattern and then moving straight to the groove and moving from the groove straight to the rhythm. I hope um, we will do more research on the drums and that's what I have for you today.